This is, this is big. <laughs> <laughs> Much bigger than usual. Much bigger than usual because normally, you know, when we do interviews, it's backstage. Mm -hmm. First time you did a show, it was at the forum. It's yeah. crazy. And then I caught you again when you was at Electric, Brixton, crazy. I saw your show at Brixton Academy, like, recently. Tore it down, man. Thank you, it's man. amazing. Thank you for, you know, we don't have to do it for the cameras, but you've, you know, been there for me since the very beginning so thank you for always being the one who's on the mic with me yo you make dope music <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i try to make dope music so as we're doing this big and it's you know it's like the first official interview that we're doing for one actual like this let's take it back to the beginning yeah. for people who may have only just caught up with you because you know you've done mixtapes you've had 10 day acid rap but for people who've only just discovered you through coloring book what made you pick up the microphone uh the first time i ever wrote a rap. Well, I was in uh, I was in fourth grade, and I was at my at my grandma's house. My uh, I call her my mama Jan, and uh, she got me a notebook, and I wrote a poem in it. And I recently just figured out, you know, that I liked poetry because Russell Simmons used to have a TV show that came on called Deaf Poetry Jam, and so I was really into it. And I and I remember I wrote my first poem, and I was like, you know this is my thing, you know? I, I like rhyming. I like, you know, I liked how my mama Jan responded when I read her my poem. And I, and I knew from then, when I was, I was probably like nine or 10, that I wanted to, you know, be that. And, you know, it was only reinforced by stuff like College Dropout and, you know, performing at talent shows when I was a kid. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I, I love writing music. I love recording music, but my favorite thing in the world is to perform music live, you know. Um, there's no feeling um, like it. So I, as soon as I found out that I was good at rapping, the next thing was, like, I need to record it and I need to, to perform it for people. Which was the first MC that, you know, because to go from poetry to rap was a bit of a transition, but which was the MC that was, like, made you want to do it? Like, who was it that you saw that inspired you to, like, take it further with the rapping? Um, Kanye. I cannot attribute it to any single other person than than Kanye West. Which track? Um, I remember the first Kanye track I ever heard was uh, Through the Wire on the radio. I was at, uh, I had just gotten like a, you know, those old Walkmans that, uh, you know, it's like a CD player, but it had a radio on it too. And uh, WGCI in Chicago played, uh, played through the wire on the radio while I was at a pizza restaurant with my parents and obviously it's radio and there was no XM or anything so I didn't know who the artist was but I remember hearing it and just being like this is crazy and then it was less than you know five songs later they played All Falls Down because his album was about to drop and I you know they said this is by Chicago's own Kanye West and I and I looked him up online and I was like oh this guy is the real deal I mean, and it's good because it's someone from your hometown as well, right? That, yeah. Did, did that give you some of a kind of confidence like when you was coming through? Yeah. But I think just, you know, the sheer exposure to it the first time, like hearing those high-pitched samples and hearing that, you know, that that four on the floor, that... Like that, the, the kick and everything was, you know... It was something new for me, and finding out that he was from Chicago was definitely encouraging. But I think if I had been from anywhere in the world, on that day, if I heard that song, I'd be who I am today. You did Reading Festival, and then, again, tore that down when he was out there <laughs> Thanks, UK man. years ago. But we talked then, and you, you know, I said, have you ever met Kanye? And you were like, you know, nah, but, you know, my people talk to his people, and da-da-da-da. What was it like when you first hooked up with him, when you guys first connected? Because it sounds like it was... A moment in the making judging oh, from how you came through and where you are now definitely i mean i think every every rapper from chicago um at some point um thought about you know wonder what kanye west thought of their music if kanye west had heard their music um and i, I you know i'm this i was the same way and very you know you know very open about 
how I felt about wanting to meet Kanye West. That was like a, a theme of my career, I think, for the first like two years. I didn't meet him until like the end of 2014, I think. Um, but yeah, when, when I first, first met him though, it was at Made in America um, in LA and I basically opened for him, but I had just come back off of like a tier of playing the same festivals as Kanye. I played like, I think like, this was the same year that that Outkast was doing. Right. They they do, they were doing all the festivals, and so I played on you know two or three with Outkast and like nine or ten with Kanye. And every night, you know, that was the theme of like my camp and like my Twitter was like, I'm trying to meet Kanye. <laughs> Somebody help me meet Kanye. I'm just trying to find Kanye. <laughs> and the person who introduced me to Kanye was actually, uh, or who who brought me into a space where I could meet Kanye was my main man, Jaden Smith. Wow. Um, I was at Made in America and I've been kicking it with him all day and that's a good friend of mine and I'll never forget um, this but I was standing in like an area that you know is basically velvet roped off from mm. you know going into the main acts area mm. and um, I remember he came up and grabbed me and he was like yo yay's downstairs you gotta meet yay you gotta meet yay and I came down and it was surreal you know He's taller than I thought he was. He was, you know, he greeted me by saying chance. I didn't think that's how it was going to go down. But all those things were, were crazy. And um, we ended up not working or, or seeing each other for at least six to eight months after that. But he called me up um, a little bit later to um, just to, to meet up, see how what I was. I was working on surf. By the way, right. thank you so much for being like one of maybe five people at radio who supported surf, <laughs> you know, across the world. Um, but he helped um, a little bit on surf and then uh, and then brought me back to L.A. a little bit later to start working on um, What Is Wrong With Me? Why can't I think of the name of the album? The Life of Pablo. Pablo. Yeah. Okay. Ultra Light being, like, crazy. Like, Thank you, that's, man. That's, I always said kind of, Tell me nothing is his best track. I think it might be that. Like, <laughs> it might have surpassed. I don't know. That's like, crazy. That song had, wasn't even a thing. When I came to meet up with Ye, there were 10 songs exactly on the album, and it was supposed to only be 10 songs. That was like the thesis of it, was that it was like a quick run through. Um, songs uh, songs like Waves were on it, and um, uh, Highlights, and stuff like that. And it, and it, and it, and it felt like a very complete project when he brought me in and he kind of was just like, I want to accent certain things and like, you know, pick up certain things, but the album was finished. And, um, seeing us how the album was finished, he was like, you know, I want to make good Fridays again. I want to like have a track mm. that I could drop every week. That's not going to be on the album. That's just like, you know, something to gear up for it. And so we started working on making songs outside of the album. And the first one that we worked on the first day that I got there was me and Nico, um, when he was still being called Donnie Trumpet. And, uh, he was like, let's, let's make something, uh, let's make something from scratch. And, uh, we, the the best way that I like to go about making music is I like to play other music. You know, I I've, I've always thought like you know you can't you can't just like be like I know a lot of people hate on people that like make music that's influenced by other people or you know use other people's you know ideas as reinforcement. But like, how can you be like a great scientist or mathematician? if if you ignore all the past work like you have to have you know foundation to work off of and so i pulled up some fred hammond and some kirk franklin and some hezekiah walker and we just played gospel music so loud if you know kanye west like even if you've just been to a show you understand that he overdoes it on on in terms of sound like mm. some, some more speakers mm. and subs than you've ever seen mm. he plays music really loud and we you know we sh we were shaking these rooms in the studio with with this gospel and um and I don't remember what song it was but he Kanye likes dissonance you know you know like chordal dissonance like mm -hmm. he likes you know minor chords and stuff that that you know has a little pain behind it and so um, Mike um, started on on some keys and um, Nico started tracking keys and trumpet and you know. Before we knew it, we had a beat, 
a young lady at the studio who I don't know to this day pulled up a vine of this little girl who was, you know, delivering like a sermon or something in the backseat of her of her of her grandma's van and played it. We instantly threw it on the track, looped it through the whole track. And then there were like three or four months between the original idea of the track and me actually becoming a writer and a person that was gonna rap on the song. It was just a thing and they had Justin Bieber come in and record over it. Um a lot of people I seen a lot of people come through the studio and record over ultralight beam and it was, you know, just this one one thing. But because of that just that beat by itself, you know, just mm-hmm. listening to that beat and having that feeling of 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 uh exalting and 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 of praise and worship that was not there previously, it opened up the album to be, you know, everything else that it could <clears throat> be. And I think it gave it energized a lot of people and made a lot of people feel you know excited to work mm. is music hall we've got yeah i mean i don't want to like so like since the beginning of time all we've ever had anybody in this world is um the word and the word uh the word is the gospel and the gospel um is music and um you have to have some type of you know discerning mentality to to be able to separate all the bullshit that seems like music from you know um the actual word but uh yeah i mean historically um minorities and people of color and 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 just you know um you know they talk about the silent majority but the very loud minority that you know has been historically you know um you know just held back Hmm. uh we've always had our words and and the word behind us and music That, that feels more relevant than ever today there were some things which are transpiring. How did it feel to be in the White House with your father? Crazy. Because I don't, few people get to experience that. Crazy. My dad, um, my dad has like a crazy life story and I don't want to talk all about my dad, but he is my hero and the one and only real deal um, example of what a man's supposed to be like you know what a real what a real man's supposed to be like um since i was a kid you know he worked mad jobs and was just always working he had you know i remember when i was a kid he worked for streets and sanitation um he did volunteer work he did everything that he could to be around you know um you know local community change in in different areas layer by layer and eventually he found this guy back then he wasn't the president his name name was Barack Obama he had a weird name and he ran him for Congress Um, my dad's a campaign manager as well and he ran him for Congress and he lost but he took him uh, he took him door to door on my block and all around uh, West Chatham, there's a lot of like older people, if you ask them, and that are still living in the hood today, that'll tell you Barack Obama came into their house and sat in their living room and asked them what they wanted to see change in Chicago. And, um, you know, that door-to-door approach is something that he, you know, instilled in me when I was first trying to put my music out, and I think that's why I still act out how I do. But anyway, he like I'm, what I'm really trying to say is that he's been with him since the beginning. And so, you know, I say it all the time. I'm I'm part of that that lucky generation of kids that are like 23 to like 25. I'd say that were like young enough to be impressionable, but old enough to be cognitive. That when the movie Head of State, have you ever seen Head of State? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For people that haven't seen Head of State, it's a movie starring Chris Rock about. Uh, the first black president and that's that's like the full extent of the movie that's like the full joke and the punchline of the whole movie is how funny would it be if Chris Rock was you know not even Chris Rock I'm sorry how funny would it be if a black guy was president you know and 
I'm at the crib, a 10 year old, like dying laughing off of it. You know, there's house parties and drinking 40s and you're, you know, your degenerate black bail bondsman brother is your running mate and stuff like that, you know. But I'm from that generation that got to watch that movie and laugh at it and then see the first black president and I would say our most successful and greatest president in United States history become elected. And I saw it from the lens of my dad, who grew up in the same house on 79th that I grew up in, campaign manager and work with this man for years, and then eventually take me, my mom and my little brother to DC to stand in the office where he works. You know, My dad had to move away also, a lot of people don't know that. When I was, uh, when I was 16, my dad had to move away for his job to DC to work in the White House. And to stand in there at that time and be standing next to history, a historic person that my kids, 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 kids will know about um, was a crazy feeling. But what was crazier was, yes, getting invited to circle back to your first question that you asked 15 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, to stand it, to, to be able to bring my dad in and have him be my plus one at the White House, you know, it, it wasn't about how anybody else saw that. I just wanted to be with my dad and have him be proud because I was not a promising kid when I was younger. I did not seem like I was going to ever take anybody to the White House. Um, so it was it was, it was was an amazing moment. And my dad tells me he's proud of me once a day. He calls me wherever I am. And so to hear him say it a thousand times um, at his old job, you know, uh, in you know, on the eve of a new presidency, it was crazy. How do you feel about the outcome of the recent U.S. election? Um, how do I feel about it? I'm, I'm indifferent, man. In all honesty, I. Uh, you're my man, so I want to keep it so a hundred thousand yeah, yeah. with you, like so real with you. I knew Donald Trump was going to win. And I think anybody in the world who's surprised um, by the election of Donald Trump has been ignorant of racism and, and you know, the tides and, and, and patterns of American history and world history. Um, I think, you know, what we had with Barack Obama was an anomaly and it was something young and fresh and um, and new and exciting and, and real. And I think us as Americans and as the world got spoiled off of it mm. for eight years, you know? Yeah, and good one. we had an amazing run, um, <clears throat> but, you know, America's so much bigger than, like, the places where our media outlets are, you know. There's a lot of people um, that just, you know, I, I don't even know, you know. I, 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 I'm not one of the people in, in, in protest of his presidency. I, I'm definitely in protest of his, uh, his, his, his plans that I've heard so far um but I don't know this is the first time I really got asked that question um I was a, a big advocate uh towards the end for Hillary Clinton and I met her and I looked her in the eyes and, and felt like she was a good person she is a good person you know um and yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird, you know? Like, we, I'm from America, which has always been, like, the freest place in the world. And he's already, like, you know, pissed me off with the, with the shit he did at, at, for, of, about Hamilton. And I don't know, man. It's scary. I don't like talking about him. I don't like thinking about him. I don't like, you know, I... And that's not to say, you know, that he's responsible for racism in America or that he's the face of it, but he's become a catalyst for a lot of people with a lot of pent-up racism 
or sexism or xenophobia or you know just conservative ideas um about you know the government's uh the 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 government's ownership of you and 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 placement in your life uh he's he's kind of like their mascot and I don't know. It sucks, but I am, as a free-thinking, young, joyous, um, optimistic black man, which is a large minority, um, I'm scared of Donald Trump. I don't hate him. I'm not mad at him. I'm just scared. I think that's exactly what um, the cast of Hamilton was was trying to um, exhibit when when the vice president elect came to their show um, when they when they asked him to to give them a chance. Um, I think it's it's out of fear when Dave Chappelle hosted SNL and spoke. I think it was out of fear. What advice would you give to the youth? Because you're an empower of people, you know, you, whether it's musicians or whether it's the youth, with what you've done with the Freestyle Night, with what you've done with putting on shows, you've done a lot of groundbreaking things that most entertainers don't do, you know, helping the homeless and so forth with um, what you did with the jackets and stuff. But there's a lot of kids that their only education is through rap. And moving forward, given what's happened and given what you're saying, like what what would be the message you give out to your fans and generations coming through, the next generation coming through? Um, it's easy to feel helpless as uh as an American if you're not super wealthy or a part of the larger majority. And it's very easy to feel helpless after an election like this um, when we're taught that, you know, certain things go a certain way and that, you know, America is the home of, you know, protected free thought and um, and just and freedom. Um, but the the truth is you're not helpless and America wasn't always that way. And you got to fight for your right. That's just the truth, you know? People will try and shame you for protesting. People will try and um, discourage you from, from speaking um, truths. But, like, you know, your power is in your word and in the word and being, you know, faithful and being um, always an honest person. And I think as far as voting goes, specifically for voting, you know, they they only pump it up every four years and make everyone excited and make everyone feel like they, you know, it's their civic duty all of a sudden. But the the truth is, you're most effective voting in your state and local elections. If you want to exact change, you know, just do a little research on who's running in, you know, in the next two years for Congress or, you know, really who's running for your alderman in your district, you know, in your ward. If you if if you are a person who has become um somewhat like consciously awakened by this this whole thing transpiring, you can be um integral to um the way America works by voting in 2 years. Uh, you know, and spending the next two years finding out, you know, policies that affect you and affect everyone. And and just like what's right and what's wrong, you know, you don't have to be rich to vote. But, you know, just like there's a lot of. I don't know, man, it's so hard to talk about politics now, you know. One more political question. <laughs> OK, we've had an actor who's president, Ronald Reagan. Now we've got a reality TV star who's president. When we're going to see the first rapper president? Hmm. Is that going to be Jay Z, Chance the Rapper? Yay! <laughs> Who would you put money on? Um, I think if anybody could do it, Kanye could do it. 
I don't think Jay wants to be president of the U.S. Um, I definitely don't want to be president <laughs> or any type of political shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. The whole the whole presidency thing is so weird. You know, you fight to be president, but you know, there's still so much that goes into making real decisions. Um, but if I could choose one person to be president, the person that I think is fit, who's got a good mind, David Banner. David Banner's dope. So Enlightened man. Look him up. He's got that info, that knowledge. So, 10 days, acid rap, surf, coloring book. What's next? Mm. What is next? I don't know. I'll probably put out an album. That's what I've been thinking about, just between us. Like, I don't... Um, I don't know exactly the format every time when I'm making something but a lot of times I have an idea and I think what I'm working on now is an album but I think it's also like in two parts I think that when I'm making music usually that I'm, I'm writing it because I want you to listen to it in the car but I'm also thinking about the day that we finally meet and I get to play it for you in front of a bunch of people and we all get to sing along mm. and so in part, yeah, I want to make an album, but I want to make it, you know, my my mixtapes have been confused for albums for a long time, so it has to be something different. And so something, something that you could consider an album, it might not be physical, it might not be like a disc or something, but an album that, you know, comes with its own live show, that's important. More sweatshirts? I spent crazy dough on the color book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's, uh, I got, I got, I got three hoodies. Yeah, I got yeah. mad coloring book stuff for you today, cause uh, we're merged up right now. <laughs> mad merch. I, I, I think it's all. Yeah, I want to let everybody know out there who supports me. I, I can see it. Um, I don't just mean people that financially support me on ChanceRaps.com and buy a hoodie or a hat or anything like that because those I mean those are important but there's people around the world that I don't know that I've never met before that pray for me and I know it's true because I wake up every day and can see it in in terms of things that are bestowed upon me that I'm blessed with that I don't deserve by any means I can I, I just want to let those people know that I feel you praying for me and I appreciate it so much and I can't do anything um without christ so thank you for for those prayers chance to rapper thank you thank you Thanks, yo man. thank you for always right. supporting me man dope, always man. helping me out <laughs>